Can Cursor, the latest hype in the AI world, build actually good React Native apps? I'll put that to the test and show you some pretty cool tips in how you can also get better results and build better apps. So if you've been living under a rock, this is Cursor. You can download it for free. It looks pretty much like Visual Studio Code, but it has some pretty amazing internal features regarding AI. You can look it up all in here or we just do it by example. So. The first thing I want to do in my freshly created React Native Expo application is I want to trigger the Composer view. So hitting Command Shift I brings up this editor. It currently has the index up here as like a little uh, reference. I will just remove that one. And I will now give the main prompt for my application. So we are building an Explorer app for Star Wars. Build a tab bar using Expo Router with three tabs. Uh, then I want to add some internal stack navigation to every page and use a dark theme throughout all of this. This is my general prompt. This is actually a bit more than I would usually give, but I would try uh, and see how far we can get. So the amazing thing about Cursor is that this now not only gives us some recommendation in like, maybe you can add this code here in this line. No. It's actually creating all of these files right here. You see the loading spinner. All of them are ready and now the whole uh, thing is ready. You can go through all the changes it made and I'm just risky. I will just say, okay, accept all. Okay, let's see what we got. We got a tabs interface. We got a layout here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is not yet working uh, because we have a layout up here and the tab bar here. So let's instead copy this over. So all of this goes here. I remove that one and boom, we have our first blueprint for the application. Now we notice we have some duplicate headers and we have some issues down here with an additional element. So I can now say, Hey, uh, could you please fix the duplicate header and make sure the index is not displayed in the tab bar. The last part is actually not that easy because this is like new expo router stuff. Um, well, kind of new stuff, but still, looks like it's applied correctly in here. Um, so let's just hit accept all. And now we have a bunch of tabs more. Okay, so it still thinks we are in there. That is a problem, but this looks pretty legit. Like we have a dark styling here. Uh, we have all these things going on and we have a films page. This was actually not too bad. Especially I could have done this, but this was so much faster. Um, so I give the credits here to Cursor, definitely. Now let's say on this films page, I want to implement the logic to um, loading data from the API. Um, let's go here now in the real chat and say implement a modern looking list with cards using film data from the Star Wars API. Okay, using some fetch. That's okay, using a flat list, using a render film card function, that actually looks pretty good. Now I wonder, is this applying in the right place? Yeah, it looks like. So we can now see the diff in our view, what was changed, and we can just simply accept all of this, hit save. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> that looks a lot better than what I could have done. Definitely better. Uh, let's see if we just go now to my uh, people page, uh, implement the same stuff like on the, and now I can reference a file. So I want to reference my films page, but load people this time. Okay. Let's see if we can get this done. Here's a film people screen. Looks good to me so far. Okay. We're done. Let's apply this to our file, hit accept, save, and we got the same stuff. <laughs> Pretty nice, pretty nice. Now, I know that there are more results because there are more characters in Star Wars. Let's try one more thing in this page. A uh, little follow up. Can you add infinite loading to load more results on this page? And I'm curious how it will handle this. Um, because I mean, I didn't give any context on that. So I'm really curious in how this uh, turns out. Let's see if we apply it. We're using this set next page people. Um, I'm not entirely sure if this is the way, but I will just accept it for the moment. 
Uh, and then we go here. Actually, that is the way to do it. <laughs> This is so much better than what I could have done. And we just like three minutes into this video, we have a tab bar with internal tabs. Um, now I want to go to a details page and this is sometimes in my test, this is where it broke. So I will bring up the composer. Let's say I want to add a film details page um, so we can navigate to the details of a movie and I want to show some information about that. Make sure you use the current folder structure. I'll just give this as an addition here because I know it broke before. So now it's creating this ID page using use local search params. That looks good up here. Um, film, fetch film, get film ID. It's using actually even the link component from Expo Router in here. I didn't expect that. Um, let's accept all. Okay, yeah, that kind of destroyed the UI a tiny bit especially because it did what it should not have done. So it did make a new folder here. I will just bring this over because I kind of know what to do at this point. So let's remove this one and then reload. Okay, this is pretty good. Uh, I wanted to test something else because this is already pretty good. Uh, but now we can also try something like this. Let's bring up the composer again. Um, and I will say, implement a favorite functionality using async storage uh, on the favorites screen. So this should now update the logic on my details page. It <laughs> actually adds all of the stuff here. Like typing all of this is so tedious. It just takes time. I know how to do it with async storage, but this is, and then we have load favorites. We have removed favorites. Let's accept all for the moment. Uh, and then we probably, yeah, we should have installed this, but it gave us the prompt in here. So we can just follow this up with npx expo install react native async storage. Let's say I want to add this to my favorites. Um, well, that uh, screen is not really readable. Uh, please use a more readable styling on this page. Some texts are too dark. Okay, I really don't want to type. I really want, just want to write and give instructions that feels like I'm the I'm the composer of this code. And, and this is what AI should do and um, should be used by. So let's hit save here. And well, now we got a pretty, pretty boring page here, but we could easily style this back. I don't know also why we lost the information here, but this is one thing, um, Still like, this is still my favorite page. This is one thing I noticed and that I will get to in a second for uh, some tips. But you see with some pretty basic prompts, we've been able to generate this application, which honestly looks better than what most people <laughs> can do uh, in a couple of hours. Um, and we have all the code in here and we haven't even done like the super specific stuff. So let's say we go into the films page and you want to refactor a code. Uh, can we do a new chat on this page? Um, so we say refactor the list items on our movies page into its own custom component. And that is something that's really valuable because um, again, it's not hard to like create a custom component and do whatever you want. But if you can just do it like this, uh, I might not be able to do it from here actually. Um, I might have to use the composer because we need to create some code. Okay, so let's do it in here because then it should actually, yeah, it generates a film list item now and it updates to use the right import for our flat list items. So with that in place, it even generates some types. That was nice. Uh, but maybe, yeah, now it did the thing again here with our index page for the films. You just have to do this again. Uh, I wonder if I would just reload the view if it then updates accordingly. Uh, but now also these types don't seem to be correct. Uh, also, I tried to use themed. Oh no, uh, I definitely don't want to do that. I rather want to go back to what we had before. That was better. <laughs> but uh, we still got the component. It's in the wrong place though. So you still need some sort of like thinking about the stuff in here. But let's try one last thing. Um, let's try a new composer and let's try generate test cases for our application. I'm pretty bad at test cases. So how well 
can it handle that stuff? Actually, I think actually pretty good. This is better than what I would have come up. So if I would have accept, uh, we would now have a test folder here. It's following the best practices, definitely. I haven't installed the testing library, so I certainly could do that. And then npm run test. I don't know, are my tests good or bad? We're gonna see. Uh, it's running and it failed and actually three tests passed. So that is certainly a good point to start creating your own tests because starting from a blank file and test always feels so bad. Um, so within just 10 minutes, we've created an application. We see there are some red things, but this is here mainly related to TypeScript. Uh, again, here as well. If you also wanted to, you can now easily say something like, uh, let's do a new composer, um, add comments to all my screens. And then I would just nicely comment all the stuff in your views without you going through every line and thinking again, what was that? Um, you see, I probably did I reference one file. I should have said like something like code base, but you could easily do this here now for all the pages. And then you had a pretty clear implementation, including tests, including components, and including a cool styling and even some logic. So I was definitely blown away by what I can do with cursor in like minimum time. Also, whenever something goes wrong in here, um, usually there's like something coming up um, that I can just hit with a tap. So see, I just go tap here. Uh, this one's also mad about something uh, touchable. Problem. Okay, I'm in the, in the test uh, stuff. That's usually pretty bad. So I go here, I just hit tab. It's a lot better to me than Copilot. You see how fast I fix that stuff? Uh, it was never that easy with just uh, Visual Studio Code and Copilot to me to fix those things. Now, how do I do this? Did I have some custom uh, things? Do I have some recommendations? Of course I do. So uh, let's go to the cursor settings. Um, I did some changes in here. So first of all, I disabled all the stuff in here and I currently only use Claude uh, and uh, O1. Me, mean, that is, just came out like a couple of days ago. Um, I haven't really played around with that. Probably I will also disable it again. Um, you can then specify all your keys in here. Under features, this is how it looks for me. I have partial accepts disabled, cursor prediction enabled because that is pretty good. Uh, auto import, I don't know why, I'm, um, but definitely you wanna make sure the composer is enabled. Um, and these are the other settings, code base. Ah, here is I can do the re-indexing. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, nice. Okay, now I might have fixed this. Additionally, here's a big recommendation from me add docs. So under the docs, I actually added the expo docs and the react native docs and the Star Wars API docs. You can just add them, put a URL in here, and then I will use in your code, especially for stuff like expo or perhaps even reanimate gesture handler. You might want to add these docs. Some are already included. That definitely improves the results that you will get from AI. Now you saw a couple of times I accepted the changes and the changes weren't completely correct and then I messed up my view and everything turned red. If you want to make sure that you prevent something like that from happening in your application, uh, I highly recommend you use git a lot. Commit, commit, commit. This is a general recommendation. I just this morning I deleted files in a project where I hadn't committed and I was like, Simon, why, why? Um, but especially here in project where like 10 files are changed at the same time, you want to do commits as often as possible in these scenarios. Okay, that was the uh, second or third recommendation. I got more recommendations for you. If you want better results, add a cursor rules file. Um, I can't exactly point to how well this file works, but here is a page called cursor.directory in which you can search for a language or framework or whatever. So for example, you want to go to expo and then you see these prompts. I think I use this one, which just gives like context to the uh, AI model. You might have used this before when talking to ChatGPT. You with this line like you are an expert in marketing in blah, blah, blah. And then to cursor, this is the same. It reads all these rules and especially 
If you like something, React Navigation, Expo Router, you're not completely sure, uh, then supplying an information block like this, use Expo Router for file-based routing, uh, is really important. Otherwise, you can get strange results. So go check out Cursor Directory, just pick the one you want, then go ahead with Copy, and here you see the About. You just need to create a .cursor rules file at the root of your project and then paste in uh, all the settings. Um, additionally, if you check out the cursor features, you've seen some of them. So code generation, multi-line edit is really doing pretty cool things um, in your application. You can ask at code base, that's what we did. You can always reference something, you can even use images. Um, and what I found pretty cool as well is once you're in the terminal of your application, so let's close this down. Um, I want to save this right now. So once you're in your terminal, you can actually also use cursor. Um, so let's say I want to run expo. Uh, then it just gives me the right command to uh, use this. Um, so that means you can not only use it in here with the chat, but you can also use the composer and with command K or control K, you can bring it up once you're or uh, when you're in your terminal. And my last tip for getting better results besides like having the rules file and all of that is just having really good prompts. Now, uh, when I gave my first prompts here, some of them were not good. Um, and that results usually in a bad result. Therefore, give more context. Whenever you write something, just be a bit more broad and just give more information. Don't just say create a navigation and do this. Um, add a bit of text and a bit of context to it because then the results that you will get from Cursor gonna be pretty epic. And as you've seen in a super short amount of time, we bootstrap this application. It might not be ready for the App Store, but give me half an hour and this one is definitely ready to be shipped. Now, you can say AI can't replace developers and maybe that's true for the moment, but if you're not keeping up with the latest technologies, you will be replaced by the people who understand and use those tools. The question might not be, can Cursor AI build my React Native app, but can Cursor improve my development speed? And the answer is absolutely yes, 100%. You've seen it yourself. AI is really making giant leaps forward every couple of weeks or month and it's easy to neglect it as like the new Web3 or just a trend and I was definitely in that boat in the beginning. But understanding and using some of the new tools can greatly increase your performance and also your app's quality and performance. We've seen this with like refactoring, uh, applying styling, generating comments or, or even generating test cases. How deep are you into the AI world and what other tools can you recommend for developers? Share them in the comments so we can all get better because I think that is still a great piece of the developer community. Speaking of getting better, if you want some actual coaching and support, you will love the Galaxies.dev Plus plan, which gives you a one-on-one -on -one onboarding and bi-weekly coachings to answer all things React Native that AI couldn't answer. Want to see some more epic React Native features? Check out this video I recently did on how quickly you can bring in HTML code into a React Native app using Expo DOM components. It's wild. And I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.